from regular deliveries of heavy goods to documents and small items. Data Post Guaranteed Delivery gives value to British business and industry every day of the working week. Data Post. We've got the organization behind us. This video is brought to you by FS Academy Commander. FS Academy's latest package offers a range of challenging scenarios available within Microsoft Flight Simulator. Your command skills will be put to the test with emergency landings, system malfunctions, hazardous weather and more. The FS Academy series is created and taught by a real-world Airbus A320 captain, so the instruction throughout is both accurate and informed. FS Academy Commander will be available from the InSim Marketplace, as well as from many of your favourite vendors. Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Black Box Simulations Shorts Regional Premium Edition. Included in the package we get the Shorts 330 and the Shorts 360 in both cargo and passenger configurations, and we also get their equivalent military transports. All up there are 9 variants of the aircraft included in the package, as well as some 36 liveries. The add-on also purports to be a study level rendition of this short's regional turboprop family. Black Box Simulations were kind enough to send me a review copy of the aircraft for the video here today. And for our flight, as you can see, we're going to be focusing on the short 360. As you'll have seen from the introduction, for today's flight we're going to be delivering the mail. We're going to be operating a Royal Mail data post service. We find ourselves at the crack of dawn on the ground at Pyreigs East Midlands Airport and we're going to be running the mail today over towards UK 2000's Isle of Man. As usual we're going to be working our way through a full flight all the way through from a cold and dark start right through to shutdown. As ever at the end of the video we'll finish up with a conclusion of what I think of the add-on. So I do hope that you enjoy the flight ladies and gents. As always if you do please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. So good morning and welcome to the cockpit of the Black Box Simulations Shorts 360. Again we're currently on the cargo ramp here at East Midlands, we're going to be running the mail over towards the Isle of Man this morning. Starting with the cockpit texturing, in this sort of lighting it does hold up reasonably well but you'll notice later on as the day brightens up the texturing is a little bit subpar versus many other add-ons that we've seen in the sim at this point. To be fair though, whilst we are starting off on a negative, the cockpit texturing is probably my most major gripe with the product. Otherwise, overall, I think black box simulations have actually done a very nice job with the shorts. Anyway, running through the pre-start checks, the part brake is set on. We'll just leave the window here open for now so that we can hear the start. Circuit breakers. We'll check down here on my side. The FO can check down on his side. Worth noting as well, the circuit breakers are actually modelled, which is really great to see. Though quite a bit of system step to the aircraft overall. There was a time where circuit breakers being modelled was really the very pinnacle or flight simulation systems modelling, but these days it does seem to be quite common in the sim, which is great. Anyway, the battery masters can go on. So we'll take the left battery. You'll notice there as well, a little bit of an animation error with the switch. We've got a uh, double switch model there. I'm sure that'll be fixed up. And same there as well, we'll take the right battery on. The electrical master will come on to internal power for the start today. And that switch in the incorrect sense, there are a few switches that are reversed as well in terms of their operation. The volts and buses, we're looking for around 25 volts there on each main battery, which we have. Currently drawing very little from the batteries there, as you can see. The generators are both checked off. The shedding buses will take those through to emergency. Those are both set. The inverters can go on. And you can see there now with the inverters running, we are drawing quite a bit more on the batteries. The emergency exit lights, again the switch in the incorrect sense there, they're set through to armed. Cabin signs, not really relevant here for the flight today, given that we don't have anyone down the back, but we'll take those on nevertheless. For the fuel, showing there about £1,200 in each main tank, so about £2,400 in total. We have that set there correctly on the totaliser, and that checks against the flight plan. We're expecting to upload 1,100 kilograms of fuel on board the aircraft today. The levelling valves are set through to off. 
we've already got the ATIS. The altimeters are set. We've got a QNH today of 1018. That's set there on both sides. That's giving us an aerodrome elevation of 300 feet. The flight instruments. We've got 270 there on the HSI, 270 there on the compass, 7 there on the right. And just running through the rest of the flight instruments there. Everything looking good. The trims. Elevation trim set neutral, same there for the rudder and the aileron trim. And for the power levers, they're set through to flight idle. Props all the way through to the feather position. Condition levers through there to the fuel cutoff position. The free start checks then, the radio and nav aids are selected off. Tech log and load sheet is complete. The performance speeds, we just got the speed bug set there for a VR of 100 knots. The departure brief, we'll brief up the departure, we'll get the aircraft set up later on. So departing out of East Midlands, it's going to be the Trent to November departure. Let's play 10-3 Delta, it's a conventional SID. Initially that's going to be based off the East Midlands ILS 109.35. We'll have that tuned up on Nav 1. Going to be tracking that out towards 1 mile, we'll then be turning onto a course of 298. We'll fly that out towards the 340 radial outbound from the Trent VOR. And we'll track that in towards Trent, that's on a frequency of 115.7. There's no turns below 810 feet, so 500 foot above aerodrome elevation. And climbing initially up to an altitude of 6,000 feet until we're cleared higher. In terms of the terrain, no significant high terrain around East Mids. We've got an MSA for the departure of 2,700 feet. Otherwise, as you've seen, a few showers passing through the area. Temperature currently 10 degrees, so we'll probably need the anti-icing systems on, certainly during the initial stages of the climb. As far as the taxi goes, we're currently on the cargo apron, as we've discussed, so we're going to be making a right turn here. We'll join on from Juliet onto Alpha, and then we'll most likely make a intersection departure here off Whiskey for runway 27 this morning. That's it in terms of the departure brief. Again, we'll get the nav aids set up once we've got the aircraft started. I have found operating the Avionix Master on and off can cause a little bit of strange behaviour with the radios from time to time. Hence why we're going to set the radios up later on. So the departure brief is complete. The start checks, the doors. Nice little system here on the aircraft. We can just use the door indications here to operate the aircraft doors. So the stairs are retracted. We'll close up the aft baggage door. And same there for the passenger door. And you can see the door warning light is now extinguished. The nav lights can go on. Same there for the anti-collision lights. Your boost pumps are selected on. You'll notice there are no switch sounds. There are still a few switches missing sounds. I'd like to see those cleaned up as well. Start master is set through to armed. And we'll be starting the left-hand engine first. So we'll take the ignition here on the left. Engaging the starter. We do have the start caution lights. And you can see there we have rotation there on the NG. Waiting until that comes up to around 15%. We seem to get max rotation around 18%. And introducing the fuel. Big spike there in ITT coming up to around 800, 820 degrees. And the ITT now reducing again. Just have a look outside here at the engine as it runs up. Overall, the prop animations are okay. They look good later on. As you can see now that the prop's spinning there a little bit faster, the animation is fairly decent. So we do have start to cut out, which we'll is monitor the engine here till it stabilizes, which it now has. Oil pressure looks good. ITT is checked. Get there on the torque and same there on the NG. We've got a fuel flow there of around 150 pounds an hour. So same now on the right hand engine. Taking the ignition and engaging the starter. And there's max motoring, fuel can go on. Again, we see the spike in ITT. I don't know whether or not that's accurate. That does come up pretty quickly. Certainly on a typical jet engine, I'd be a little bit worried to see the EGT coming up quite so quickly.
And looks like we do have two good starts. Again, the oil pressure's checked. Engine parameters look good. And we do have data cutouts. Hydraulic pressure is checked. The hydraulic quantity there does seem to sit within the red band, so I think that's probably slight inaccuracy there as well. We'll take the generators on. The off starts then. The start master is set through to normal. Ignition is off. Electrical master is set through to internal. Generators are on. The shutting buses can go through to normal. And we'll just reset the gens here as well. External power has been disconnected. The inverters are checked. Patches and windows. We'll just close up the cockpit window. The animation is fairly abrupt. And the doors and windows are closed. Once again, the hydraulics are checked. Performance speeds are checked. Avionics. Take the Avionics Master on. For the flaps, it'll be a flaps 5 takeoff, so we can set that here ahead of time. We have flaps 5 selected and indicated. We'll carry out an auto feather test. I'm not seeing any movement. I think we may need to bring the props all the way forward from memory. TG7043, London, roger. So we'll just bring the props fully forward, allow those to stabilise. We'll try the auto feather test again. No mention of that in the checklist. One thing that is missing from the product currently, there is no checklist as far as I can tell included in the documentation, so using what I believe is a revised version of a Real World Shorts 330 checklist. And again, no mention of bringing the props forward at the moment, but I suspect that should now allow us to carry out the auto feather test. Again, just waiting here on the props to stabilise. In terms of our cautions and warnings, just the control locks there left to go. And you can see there, we now have the auto for the lights, the prop RPM's dropping. So test is complete. Before we carry out the taxi checks then, we'll run through the setup for the departure. Again, nav one initially, we'll select 109 decimal 35. That's the frequency for the East Midlands ILS. And you can see we're picking that up there, 0.7 miles from the station, we're going to be tracking out towards one mile. Tracking bound towards Trent, that's on a frequency of 115.7. Decimal seven. And we've got that set in the standby. On nav 2, we'll set 115.7 decimal seven as the primary. And then later on, we're going to be tracking towards Wallasey, that's on a frequency of 114.1. Decimal one. So now we're just set, we're going to be tracking runway heading initially out towards one mile, so there's no real point here making use of the CDI and the heading bug to do that. Just fly that manually. Afterwards though, we're going to be coming onto a course of 298, so we'll set that on the heading bug. Good afternoon, Jersey 555, climbing flat level 2, one zero radar heading is 175. There's 300 and 298, we're going to be tracking 340 inbound towards Trent. So we've got 340 selected on my side. It's going to be a course of 292 later on towards Wallasey. We'll set that here just as a reminder. Jersey 555 on the climb flight level 230. And there's our course of 292. The altitude alerter will set 6,000 feet. Again, we're going to be climbing 6,000 until we're cleared higher by air traffic control. And we have 6,000 set. We'll arm that later on during the climb. The taxi checklist then, the taxi lights are selected on, flight instruments, just scanning those once again, are checked, reserve power is selected on, the props are set through to taxi, and that is the taxi checklist complete. As I say, we'll be taxiing off here, right turn on to Juliet, then right again on to Alpha, making our way down to Holding Point Whiskey. For departure off runway 27.
Okay, so we're now down at Holding Point Whiskey for runway 27. And for those that are interested, that's the Ratcliffe power station off there in the distance. Included with the Pyre Geese Midland scenery, which is really nice. Just the pre-takeoff checklist left to run, so the air conditioning and cabin fans we can select off. Again, a couple of switches here with no sounds currently associated with them. Be nice to see that adjusted. For the ice protection, we'll take the Pito static and still walling heats on. Same for the windshield heat, we know we're going to be climbing up into the cloud layer. Props will leave off for the time being, same for the wing and tail de-ice. Flaps and trims, we have flaps 5 set and indicated trims. Rudder and aileron trim set through to neutral, we've just got a little bit of after elevator trim here, otherwise I find the short 360 is fairly heavy during the rotation. ATC clearance has been obtained, we'll take the transponder through to out, we'll take the weather radar on. The weather radar is modelled, which is nice. Of course, just essentially using the default Microsoft Flight Simulator coding. Landing lights are selected on. Same for the strobes. The flight controls, we can remove the gust lock. Nice that we have the animator pilot. That does just need a little bit of adjustment, though, currently clipping into the seat. You can remove it, should you so wish, by the fuel and load menu. So for the flight controls, we'll carry out a flight control check. We have full up. Pull down and neutral. Pull left. There is just a little bit of delay here on the yoke animation. There's full right. So, for example, if I release my flight controls now, you can see there the yoke does take a little bit of time to return to center. On the rudder, we have full left, full right, and neutral. And again, fairly basic texturing down the back there behind the rudder. I think that's worthy of note. On the caution and warning panel, we have all lights out, prop levers are set through to max RPM, fuel levers are set through to the flight detent, part brake can come off, we are clear for the takeoff and it is clear on final. So we'll get ourselves into position here on runway 27. Overall the shorts actually taxis pretty nicely, with the condition levers back in the ground position, the aircraft doesn't pick up too much pace. And control is good here as well on the rudder, in terms of the nose wheel steering. So for the takeoff itself, VR is going to be 100 knots. We'll climb initially at 130 knots. Once we're through 500 feet, we'll come back towards climb power. We can start cleaning the aircraft up. And we'll aim for a climb speed of 150 knots. The manual calls for max power during the takeoff. We're going to come slightly shy of that. Otherwise, I find it's really easy to overtemp the engines during the takeoff. So we'll stay out of the amber bands here on the torque. You can see now we do have the auto feather armed. Nice engine sounds overall as well on the aircraft. So power's set, air speed's alive. The wind there just wanting to pick up the left wing slightly, so countering that. It's 100 knots, back on the yoke. Again, the aircraft fairly heavy initially in pitch. And we do have positive climbs, so we'll tap the brakes, bring in the gear. Again, pitching for 130 knots initially and we can start trimming for that here as well it's 0.5 on the DME so another half mile here and we'll start the turn and up through 500 feet so 800 foot on the altimeter we'll come back towards climb power There's one mile, there's 800 feet. So starting the right turn onto our course of 298. We're looking for 3.7 on the torque, which we already have, 1650 on the props. 
Anya 223 Alpha, climb flight level 310, set course direct Southampton. And just coming on to our course. So, power set. We'll pitch the nose down again, looking for a climb speed now of 150 knots. And the speed is checked, we can retract the flaps. Level 310, course, head course direct Southampton, Britannia, 223. So letting that speed build, as I say, up towards 150 knots. We're good now in terms of the east mids DME. We'll switch over to Trent. It's on a frequency of 115 decimal seven. And you can see we are now picking up Trent. Slight modeling error there, I would say, on the gauge. The needle a little bit buried away. Can be quite tricky to spot at times. Jersey triple five out navigation, Southampton. Overall, the shorts really nice to hand fly, actually. The aircraft feels pretty weighty, very stable, so easy to hand fly. Very speed stable as well, which is nice. We'll see that during the arrival later on. The after takeoff checks then. Gear is up and off. Power is set through to climb. Flaps are up. Reserve power is selected off. Prop sync is selected on. Again, we'll just pitch down, let that speed continue to build, up through three and a half thousand feet. So another two and a half thousand foot here in the climb. Landing lights will leave on, taxi lights can come off. We'll leave the landing lights on throughout the flight since we're going to be staying down at 8,000 feet today. Cabin signs will leave as is, again, no one down the back. Anti-ice we can leave as is for now, although we are going to be coming up into the cloud there fairly shortly. And for the air conditioning, once again, we'll take that on. Same as well here for the cabin fans. Our temperatures will stay on the QNH for now. Transition altitude is 6,000, and we are leveling off at 6,000. So speed's looking good now, up through 4,000 feet. Another 1,500 foot to go. As I say, I really like the way the aircraft hand flies overall. I think that black box simulations generally do a pretty decent job with their fly models these days. And certainly their quality in general has improved significantly versus what we initially saw within the sim. I believe the first black box simulations aircraft that I took a look at was the Islander in its previous state and I was fairly scathing of that add-on. But black box simulations have since done an awful lot to the aircraft, it's certainly a much nicer add-on now. 1000 to go. And from what I've heard from a couple of real world Islander pilots, overall the flight model does a pretty decent job of replicating how the aircraft feels to fly. I suspect that's probably true here as well with the shorts. So that CDI bar starting to come in. We'll centre up the heading bug here ahead of time just to save ourselves a little bit of work. And we'll level off manually. And then we'll get the autopilot in once we're established at altitude and on course. Cruise power is going to be 3.5 on the torque, 1400 RPM. And just approaching 6,000 feet. So levelling off at 6,000 until we're through Trent. 10 miles now from the station. Cafe 002, contact London 134, decimal 9 now. Bye bye. There's 6,000, we'll let the speed build. Start coming back towards 3.5. And start turning inbound now towards the VOR. British 940, contact London 135, decimal 2. Good bye. So get there on the torque. 3-5, Coming back on the props, 1400 RPM. Britannia 223 Alpha, contact London 135-4-2, We'll leave ourselves around 1500, that works quite nicely for the detent here that I have on my hardware. Jersey triple five, contact London 129-4-2, goodbye. 129-4-2, Jersey triple five, bye. Okay, so established now, inbound towards Trent, seven miles to run. And we do have the aircraft trimmed out. We'll take the your damper in. Same for the autopilot. We'll come into heading and out. Just gonna try nav here as well. I have had a few issues with nav on the aircraft to date. So we'll see how the aircraft handles that. Moving off at 6,000. Interestingly, you don't get the altitude alert there unless the autopilot's in. Pakistan 791, N1 ready, flight level 220 to be level at Hemel. 
I come into NAV. The aircraft has armed up in NAV, so it was obviously a bit of a one-off issue. I'm sure it is replicable, but I don't know exactly what was causing the problem. Into the cloud layer, the OAT is now down at zero degrees. We'll take the pop the ice on. Again, those switches are in the incorrect sense. We'll avoid taking the airframe de-ice for now. We'll just keep a good eye on things as we pass through the cloud layer. We'll come back into heading. We're pretty close in towards the station. And as we said earlier on, once we're overhead Trent, we're looking track outbound 292. So we'll turn about one mile before Trent. That should have us nicely established on the radial outbound. We can set that here ahead of time. Delta 21 with you 280. Delta 21, good afternoon. So we have 292, three miles to run. We'll just use the RMI here to keep an eye on the Trent VOR. And ultimately going to be tracking on towards Wallasey, which is on a frequency of 114.1. We'll tune that up on NAV 2. Now we'll just get ourselves back down towards 6,000 feet, so it's vertical speed, out select. Okay, Storm 791, contact London 130.902, good night. And we should capture it out once again. There's one mile, we'll come onto the heading. We should see that RMI needle flick round very shortly. There's out. And again, we'll just come back towards 3.5 on the torque. 130, Pops looking good. We'll set the speed bug just as a reference. You can see there the CDI bar starting to come in. And we're just down the heading for now. That's going to be very sensitive this close in towards the station. Clearing the cloud layer again for the time being. We'll take the... Pop the ice off. We are now over Trent. We can climb up to 8,000 feet. We'll set 8,000. We're coming to vertical speed for the time being. Ryan, it's uh, Gretchen E. 7043, contact London 135, decimal 32, goodbye. And once again we'll hit out select, so we have that armed, 8,000. We'll run through the cruise checklist now just to get the items out of the way, so the altimeters, we'll come onto a QNH of 1013. 532, easy 7043, bye. Got that set there on the left, we'll leave current QNH on the right, it's a little bit difficult to see from here. We'll leave ourselves in cruise power for now, we'll just make a bit of a cruise climb. Once we hit 150 knots, we'll come back into IS hold. In terms of the fuel state, down to around 2,000 pounds on board the aircraft. Cabin signs we'll leave as is. And tracking nicely now, away from Trent, inbound towards Wallasey. So we'll level off, as I say, at 8,000 feet. We've got about an hour here in the cruise. I'm sure that many of you know the drill by now, we'll head outside the aircraft, we'll take a look at the external model in more detail, and of course taking some of the scenery as well en route, we'll be passing directly overhead Liverpool, so we should see the city and the River Mersey if the weather conditions allow. We've got our descent planned at 1000 feet per minute for the arrival in towards the Isle of Man, so we need about 8 minutes in the descent, obviously we'll aim to be level before we hit the field. So with that in mind I'll come back to you around 10 minutes before our arrival into the Isle of Man. Should be a good one. Hopefully the weather will give us some interesting conditions. We can brief up and set the aircraft up during the descent. Running for all, good afternoon, runner 927, flight level 250. And we're direct about. Runner 9287, good afternoon. You can set course now direct to Compton, then direct to Honolulu. And uh, say again, the last way After Compton to Honolulu. Delta 21, contact London 127 decimal 1. Goodbye. 127 decimal 1, Delta 21. London, good afternoon, EC 6131, climbing flight level 210, heading 130. EC 6131, thanks. Continue on that heading, climb flight level 240. London, good afternoon, British 85, Alpha flight level 260 towards Compton. 
Bruce 85 Alpha, thanks. Continue on the heading for Compton and the radar heading. On the heading, that's uh, 305 British 85. Bionair 9287, turn right 10 degrees. What's the new heading? And on the heading will be 360, runner 907. Roger. Uh, Ryanair 9287, descend now, flight level 220, to be level of beam Compton. Easy 6131, climb flight level 310. Level 310, easy 6131. Easy 6131, climb to flight level 290, just confirm your request at level. Level 290, request flight level 370, easy 6131. Roger. Ryanair 9287, you can set course again direct to Honolulu. Direct Honolulu, Ryanair 9287. So, welcome back to the cockpit of the Shorts 360. As you can see, we are just beating our way through a little bit of weather here currently, still maintaining 8,000 feet for the time being, about 30 miles out now from the Isle of Man. Doing about 180 knots indicated, so about 3 miles per minute. And we've got 8,000 feet to lose. Again, we're planning on a descent rate here of 1,000 feet per minute. So, by my reckoning, we need about 24 miles to run for the descent. However, we're actually going to be flying a little bit of a DME arc as well, so that's going to add a few more track miles. We'll just send that at 24, we can finesse things later on. In terms of the MSA then, we're going to be coming on to runway 26 at the Isle of Man. The airport itself down at sea level, there's not too much significant terrain around, there's just a little bit out towards the north of the field. So the MSA is 3,200. We can intercept the ILS at 2,000 feet. We'll set 2,000 as we know we're coming in over the water. We'll keep a good eye on that as we make the approach. So we've got 2,000 feet, just coming up on our top descent point. We're coming to vertical speed. And again, we'll go with a descent rate here of 1,000 feet per minute. Fish 85 Alpha, descend when ready, flight level 220 to be level of beam constant. And obviously just coming off the power again here as well to make sure we don't bust through VMO. We'll come back to around 3,000 foot-pounds of torque as set. We'll come into heading again. Again, we're going to be flying the DME arc. The Isles approach itself actually has an 8 DME arc, but we're going to come out at around 11 just to give ourselves a little bit more time to get everything configured and set up as we would like. And actually, with the 10 DME arc there, we'll send down to 3,000 foot initially. That's going to work out quite nicely for us. And as long as we stay out towards the south of the VOR, we can actually descend down to 2,600 feet as far as the MSA is concerned. So, first things first, we'll just brief up the approach. We can then get the aircraft set up for the arrival. So, again, planning on flying the ILS DME or runway 26 at the Isle of Man. That's plate 11 2. Frequency is 111.15. The final approach course is 259. Aerodrome elevation is 52 feet. And we're going down to the Cat 1 MDA of 233. Position height for that's 200 feet, we've already got that set on the radout. Just continuing to come back off the torque here. Again, keeping a good eye on that speed. In terms of the missed approach, it's continuous climb up to 3,000 feet, initially straight ahead. Through 2,000 feet, we'll make a left turn back towards the locator at 3,000. Terrain we've already discussed a little bit, there is some high terrain out towards the north of the field. And that's up at around 1600 feet. The MSA, 3200 out to the north, 2600 out to the south. Transition level is by air traffic, the QNH is 1018, we'll set that in just a moment's time, just coming down through 6000 feet. In terms of the weather, we can already see the islands, so generally pretty decent conditions over the Isle of Man. Wind's out from the west, so that's good for runway 26. There is a little bit of rain on the forecast, but that seems to be clear at the moment. And again, QNH 1018 with a temperature of around 10 degrees. Landing on 26, we'll use manual braking, full reverse. Plan to come off at Charlie, we'll then make our way in towards the western or eastern apron, depending on what we find in terms of parking space. Belfast is the alternate today, and I plan to carry a little bit of extra fuel for the flight, primarily just 
not being all that familiar with the aircraft and whether or not the fuel burn's accurate. With the flight plan, we should be arriving with around 660, 700 kilos. Currently we have 1400 pounds, so that's pretty good in terms of the fuel burn, that seems to be pretty accurate overall, which is nice. With that fuel we've got about 50 minutes extra plus Belfast, so plenty of options. And again, already visual with the field, so the weather should be absolutely fine. In terms of the setup for the aircraft then, we'll set the frequency, so again, triple one, decimal one five. We can set that on both sides. Approaching 15 miles again, we'll start the turn around 10. And we'll tune up the RLS here on my side now. A bit of a misclick there. We should already pick up the DME, sure enough, showing around 11 miles to run. We can just use Nav 2 here for the RMI. As discussed, we've got 200 foot set there on the radout for the decision height. And as I say, we'll start the turn here at 10 miles. In terms of the descent checklist then, the MSA we've already discussed, weather has been discussed, approach speeds, we're looking for a VREF of 105, the approach will be 110. We'll set that on the speed bug, just coming down through 4,000 feet, so another 1,000 foot to go here in the descent. And we can shallow up that descent now. Come up to around 3,000 foot pounds again on the torque. And we'll start that turn now for the DME arc. When red DZ, send flight level 220, level competent, British 85 Alpha. We said the inbound course for the RLS was 259. Flying air 9287, contact London 133 decimal 07. And we have 259 set. 307, Ryanair 9287. And we'll just come out further to the right to put the Station there, 90 degrees off the aircraft. This head flies through two fox rods, route directed to Trent, contact London, 127 decimal 87, goodbye. And we'll come slightly further out still, again, we want around 10 miles here for the arc itself. 2787, flying through two fox rods. So it's finishing up the descent checks. Speeds are set, fuel we've already discussed, about 1400 pounds just below now on the aircraft. Altimeters, we've got QNH 1018 set there on both sides. The approach brief is complete. For the approach checklist, the anti-icing, take the prop de ice off for now, the rest will leave as is, cabin signs are on, now it's set, fuel cross feed is selected off, altimeter is set, prop sync is off, that is the approach checklist complete. Now we'll just run through a couple of final items here just to give ourselves a bit more capacity later on, flying the aircraft single pilot, so for the final checklist take the air conditioning off and again same for the cabin fans the short 360 actually unpressurized so we're not depressurizing ourselves here we're just potentially heating up the cabin a little bit or in this case probably cooling it down it's around two degrees celsius outside once again the altimeters are cross-checked we'll hold the gear for now landing lights are set on we'll take the taxi light on there as well so just the props the flaps and the gear to come just approaching 3,000 feet, we'll continue the descent. As we said, down towards 2,000 for the intercept onto the RLS. And looking good now in terms of that distance. So we'll turn back in towards the field. And we can start reducing our speed here as well. So we'll come back off the power levers, down to around 2.0 on the torque. Good afternoon, easy 6131, climbing flight level 370, just turning towards Coxie. As we do so, the auto feather disarming. So nicely established now on a 10 mile DME arc. We can actually cut the corner slightly here, we are a little bit low now, we want 3,000 feet at 10 miles. Similarly though, we do need to level off here just to let that speed start to reduce. Easy 6131, landing control, roger. Uh, looks like there's now a little bit of weather passing through the area. Not quite visual with the field just yet. Again, we do have the RLS tuned up. Correct course is set. You can see that course bar completely buried away again. 
and we are showing just slightly low now just below the glide which is exactly where we want to be Although I'd say that indication is slightly incorrect here two and a half thousand feet we should be on the glide around eight miles not nine So again, we'll just shallow up that descent. Waiting on that CDI bar to come in. And coming further back off the power, we want that speed back around 160 knots. We can take the gear around 148, I believe it is. Good day, Easy 7067, flying flow off 310, heading 165. We'll take flaps five. There goes the CDI bar. Pretty abrupt there in terms of the bar coming in, so that's making it a little bit trickier to actually intercept. So we'll slew that heading bug around. We're going to have to come slightly back up to the left there. There's 2,000 feet. We should come into out. Interestingly there, not seeing out capture. We're coming to approach. We should see glide slope there as well, so slightly strange here in terms of the autopilot modes. Yeah, we do have glide slope armed. And we are slightly below the glide. Okay, good now in terms of the speed, we'll take the gear down. EZ7067, London Control, good day, contact all three. Seven, Six miles, 1700 feet. We are still quite low. Do you now have glide slope capture? Well, three, seven, zero, seven, zero, six. And the missed approach altitude we said was 3000 feet. That's set. Gears down, we have three greens. We'll set flaps 15. And as we discussed on the departure, out of East Midlands, the aircraft is very speed stable overall, so nice to fly manually, both in terms of how it feels on the controls and on the power. So nicely established, we'll take our final flap setting, flaps 30. Going to give us quite a bit more drag, we'll see that speed continue to fall off. The final checklist then, air conditioning is off, altimeters are set, landing gear down, three greens. Landing lights and taxi lights are set, the props come back through to max RPM. And the flaps are full. That's the landing checks complete. Those coming slightly back up on the power levers again to maintain the speed. Two reds, two whites are on the puppy. Doesn't look like we've got too much drift at the moment, so again the wind out from the west as forecast. We'll centre up the heading bug. Three miles to run, 1,000 feet. Everything looking good. A little bit of a view of the Isle of Man here as we pass down the coast. Using the updated Rex Accuseason here as well for the autumnal textures, which is nice. And on V approach now, so again, just slightly back up on the power levers. We'll disconnect the autopilot. Apparently that will automatically disconnect at 100 feet. We can take out the yaw damp here as well. And as before, the aircraft really stable. Feels good on the controls. Putting in small inputs, I'm not really seeing any change here in the flight path, which is nice. Typically, as we know in the sim, Microsoft flight simulator flight models can be rather sensitive. Loading around 500 feet per minute, 110 knots, that's about right. We should have around 12 knots of wind off the nose, so ground speed currently around 100 knots. Still just slightly high, correcting for that. And as I say, once we touch down, we'll just use the full beta range initially, see how quickly that gets the aircraft slowed down. We can start coming off the brakes thereafter, vacate right off at Charlie. London, good afternoon, Expo 7066, we are climbing 310, radar heading 165. Back on the Pappy. Looking good for the touchdown zone. Speed's good. 
Yeah, really enjoying how the aircraft flies overall. Yeah, it's starting to reduce the power. Ah, just holding the aircraft off. Long landings will definitely take full beta. Really easy though to get an absolute greaser out of the aircraft. So fully up on the beta range. Start coming onto the brakes to vacate off to the right. And as you can see, the aircraft will stop pretty quickly. Okay, so just coming off at Foxtrot, we'll head in towards the easterly apron, go and park ourselves up between the two ATRs. The offline checklist, the fuel levers, and go into the ground detent. Top levers will leave as is for now, flight controls are locked. Flaps can come up. Take the weather radar off, and left here in towards the easterly apron. Transponder, once again we'll set through to out, take the landing lights off, and same there for the strobes. Anti-ice, we can take the pitot static install heats off, same there for the windshield heat, and props are off. We'll leave the avionics master on here till we've got the aircraft parked up. And again, just coming right here into the apron between the two ATRs on stand 1-3. Expo 7066, under control, good day. Front part of all 370. Expo So gently onto the brakes. The brakes initially don't seem to do all that much in the 360, but they do grab thereafter. Hot brakes are set. The shutdown then, the power levers are both at flight idle, part brake is set, prop levers can come through to fully feathered. As usual, just having to manually bring the props back into the feather position. Your levers, we'll just wait here a couple more seconds for the props to run down. You can see we do get a hydraulics warning there on both one and two as the props come back. Uh, we can cut the number one. And same on the number two. Good run down there on the left. And same there on the right. We'll just open up the window again so that we can hear the sounds during the shutdown. For the shutting buses, they can go back through to emergency. Generators. Are selected off. I really like the animation as well on the needles. I forgot to mention that earlier on, but I think those are done very well. So generators are off, emergency exit lights are off, taxi light is off, we'll take the beacon off as well. Everyone looks master, is selected off, cabin signs are off, lighting set as required, air conditioning we can leave as is, boost pumps. Interestingly, now getting a click sound for that switch, which is a bit strange. Boost pumps are off, electrical is set as required. And that's the shutdown check is complete here on the ground in Ronald's Way. So there you go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed our outing in the Black Box Simulations Shorts 360. As ever, to finish up the video, I'll give a more detailed breakdown on what I think of the add-on. We can work our way through various aspects of the product and I'll give you what I think are the highlights and the weaknesses of the Shorts Regional Premium Edition. So starting with the aircraft modelling, I would say that the Shorts has been done to a very typical standard for black box simulations. 
The external modelling is pretty decent. By no means the most detailed external model that you'll see in the sim, but nevertheless, I don't have any major complaints there. The internal modelling is certainly a little bit weaker, a little bit more basic. Still passable, and I do think that the sections of the cockpit you're most likely to interact with look decent enough. The more hidden away areas in the cockpit, and indeed the cabin though, again, fairly basic in terms of their modelling depth. The same is also broadly true of the texturing, I think externally the aircraft looks good. Maybe a little bit more dirt and wear and tear on some of the liveries would have been nice. The livery resolution, also a touch lower than we've seen from other add-ons in the sim. Again though, there are 36 liveries included, so certainly a very nice selection there. As far as internal texturing goes, again, the internal texturing and also lighting could certainly be better. It's really the weakest aspect of the product. The texturing is good enough to not hamper the enjoyment of the product too much. But it would have been nice to see what is otherwise a really great fun, pretty detailed add-on just be finished off with some high resolution, more detailed and accurate textures. Obviously, you'll have seen the texturing for yourself throughout the flight, so hopefully you'll be able to get a pretty good feel as to whether or not the texturing meets your own personal preferences. So opening up there with what I would say are the weaker aspects of the product. Otherwise though, I have to say that Black Box Simulations, again, I think has done a really nice job with the Shorts Regional Premium Edition package. The add-on is certainly quite expensive, retailing at just shy of 50 euros, but again, you do get quite a bit of bang for your buck in terms of variety, with a large number of airframes and liveries included. At this sort of price though, it would have been nice to see a few additional features, for example, no chocks, no cones, no covers included as best I could tell. It would also have been a nice touch to have visible cargo modelled. There is integration with the GNS 530, it would have been nice though to also have integration with the PMS 750 and the TDS GTNXI. As far as systems modelling on the aircraft goes, this does seem to be a fairly detailed representation of the shorts. Undoubtedly, there are some areas of the systems modelling that need cleaning up. For example, we've discussed the fact that some of the switches currently work in the reverse sense. As well, I have had issues with both the autopilot, the radios. But overall, what has been modelled by Black Box Simulations seems to be a very solid foundation. Hopefully, the developer will continue to tweak and refine the aircraft systems. As far as the flight modelling goes on the Short 360, again, overall, I was generally pretty impressed. We aren't talking A2A standards in terms of the flight modelling, but the aircraft certainly feels representative. Again, it certainly has quite a nice feeling of weight on the controls, a decent amount of inertia as well. And for me, as we discussed during the flight, I also really enjoyed the amount of stability that the aircraft tended to exhibit. It certainly made hand flying feel that much more realistic and also much more enjoyable. In terms of the performance numbers, I can't attest to every aspect of the aircraft, but generally the aircraft seemed to behave pretty reasonably. As we discussed, the fuel burn seemed to be pretty accurate as well. Flying the real world numbers didn't seem to give us any issues. As far as the aircraft sounds go, I thought generally they were pretty strong overall. Again, there are one or two areas that need cleaning up, a few switches for example that need sounds adding to them. Initially, I wasn't sure whether or not the product had a WI sound pack. Somewhat bizarrely, opening and closing the cockpit window on the ground doesn't seem to result in a change in sound, but it does once airborne, so I would assume that there is a WI sound pack included. Either way though, the engine sounds are generally very good, both internally and externally. You do get a nice whine from those PT6s, decent prop noise there as well. The cockpit ambience is also very good, although some of the background sounds do seem to stop and start quite abruptly. Lastly, in terms of the aircraft's FPS, you will take a decent hit operating the shorts. I was getting around 74 FPS in the aircraft versus around 120 in the default Cessna 152. All in all then, I do think that the shorts regional premium edition package is another very decent effort from Black Box Simulations. The aircraft isn't without its faults. Again, for me, it's the texturing that somewhat holds the add-on back. And I do feel that as a result, the package is a touch pricey for what it is. Otherwise though, the aircraft flies very nicely. I think it sounds very nice as well, although sounds always seem to be subjective. The system's depth is also very decent. And of course the aircraft is quite unique. So I'm sure that the add-on will tick a lot of boxes for many people. I love having these older quirkier aircraft available within the sim. Black box simulations have certainly managed to give the shorts a decent amount of character. The aircraft feels the part. And I suspect I'll be coming back to you again at a later date, probably with a couple of mid deliveries to showcase the aircraft once again. I do, of course, have to say a very big thank you to Black Box Simulations for allowing me to review the product. And of course, thank you to all of you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. And if you'd like to help support the channel further, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. I'll leave a link to both of those down in the video description below. 
And once more, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. I do hope that all of you are having a great day, wherever you are. Take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.